Good morning, church. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Today we're continuing in our series on the book of Jonah, and our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with a trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There was kind of a theme in that, in that psalm, yes? What it, praise the Lord. It says that a few times. We are going to praise the Lord together with loud voices. We don't have any loud clashing cymbals this morning, but we're going to sing loud anyways. I invite you to stand if you're able. We're going to begin by singing together 10,000 Reasons. next song is a it's a favorite of mine it's been a favorite of mine for many years and it's called blessed be your name and it talks about blessed be your name in the good times and in the bad times and 
the chorus of this song and the bridge come from the story of Job. And Job had everything taken away. He lost his family and his, all of his cattle and everything he owned, he lost. And his friends kept saying to him, he said, just curse God and die. Even his wife told him, he said, just curse God and die. And he said to God, he said, you give and you take away. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, to have that kind of faith that even when it all goes away that we can still trust and hope in God. So let's sing together, Blessed Be Your Name. teach you a new song today. This song is called Battle Belongs. 
the chorus says, So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So if you've heard it before, you might have heard it on the radio, feel free to sing along or feel free to listen and catch the words. And we're going to sing this a few times over the next and learn it all together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through joining us on Facebook today. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Leave us a comment. Let us know that you're worshiping with us, and we are going to stand again and greet those around us in the name of Christ.
I'd like to invite any kids and anyone young at heart to come on down for the children's message this morning. Arg, matey, I need to make me a little room here. I'm a little wider than that. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Do you all remember what story we started reading last week? No. No? You all weren't here last week, were you? Mm -hmm. Well, we started reading a story about Jonah. Do you remember Jonah? What do you remember about Jonah? You don't remember, you just remember the name, huh? Yeah. Anyone else? What do you remember about Jonah? Well, let's take a look and see what we have here. We're going to read Jonah chapter 1, verses 7 to 17. This is the sailors shouting here. Are they shouted to one another? Let us cast lots to discover who be to blame for this wretched misfortune. We cast lots, and twas Jonah who be the scoundrel. Ah, what's your business, me hearties? Who sent ye here? What have your home, and what be your trade? Out with it, or else you'll be feeling me cutlass. Savvy? He bellowed, I be a Hebrew, mateys. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land what it be. Then the scallywags were right petrified, and they said to him, What be you doing this for? The men knew he'd been running from the Lord, because he'd told them that. What be ye about, ye scurvy scallywags? What ye be asking of me? That this sea be calm? Ye best be hoping ye can do something to appease me, else these tempestuous seas be the least of your worries." Avast, ye scurvy dogs, do as I ask, and take me up, yea, cast me o'erboard into the sea. The waves will be stilled for you, I swear it. I be knowing tis cause of me this wild tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the scallywags took the oars and put in hard shift to bring her to the coast. But they were met with failure, for the sea rose up in a mighty gale against them. Our crying be the only answer. We begging ye, O Lord, ye be put no innocent blood on our hardened souls. Don't let us perish because of this man. Ye do what ye please, as always. So they took up the old Jonah and cast him into the sea. And the sea stopped her mighty raging. Then the men feared the Lord and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made their pledges. Now the Lord, he had prepared a great fish for swallowing up old Jonah. And Jonah were in the belly of the beast for three days and three nights. Hoo-wee! You heard this story before. You remember the story about Jonah being in the belly of a fish. Yes. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Can you believe that they threw Jonah into the sea. Pretty crazy, isn't it? I saw a no in there. You didn't believe they did it? You can't believe it? It is pretty crazy, isn't it, that, that here they're out in this, this crazy, tempestuous storm and they're, they're willing to throw Jonah overboard into the sea. But what happened when they threw him overboard? A fish ate him, but what happened before that? The storm stopped it did. As soon as they threw Jonah into the sea, the storm stopped. Now, why do you think that is? Because he disobeyed God, and God was throwing the storm against Jonah, not against the rest of the men on the boat, I. Eh? So when Jonah was in the sea, the storm stopped. But they didn't want to throw Jonah into the sea. He told them right away, he said, throw me into the sea and the storm will stop. But they didn't throw him right away. They tried to row to shore. 
They tried to save the ship without hurting Jonah. But the storm stopped when Jonah was thrown in the sea. And Jonah could have drowned right there. But in the craziest twist of all, God sent a fish to swallow Jonah to keep him alive. Does that make any sense? It is quite a turn of events indeed. And we're going to hear more about this story in the weeks to come, so you're going to have to come back to hear the rest of it. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for these stories that we can hear to learn more about who you are and about who you've called us to be. God, that you have power over the storms that you have power over the seas and everything that lives in them. God, give us the courage and the faith to follow you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's scallywags said, Amen. You may go back to your seats. You have no idea how hard it is to read with an eye patch on. But we do it anyways. And I can't put my glasses on over the eye patch because that just takes, that just, that just ruins the whole image. We are going to take some time to worship the Lord in our joyful giving. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. We know that everything we have comes from God. Father in heaven, we offer these gifts up to you today as a token of our faith, as a token of our appreciation, as a token of our knowledge that you are indeed in charge of it all. God, we thank you for these gifts. We pray that you give us wisdom in using them to further this ministry in this community. Help us to be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. seated. At this time, we are going to lift our prayers to the Lord. We're going to lift our prayers. We're going to uh, finish this time by saying together the Lord's Prayer. If you need the words to the Lord's Prayer, they are printed in your bulletin. A um, couple of announcements. We do finally have a address for Rhonda Myers. So we have that in the office, and we'll be able to send that out to you uh, this week, so that if you want to send cards or if you want to visit, she's in Whitehall. Um, so we'll get that address out to you as soon as possible. Um, we've had some good reports from Bob. The medication has seemed to be working. They've had good reports three weeks in a row, three weeks in a row, and he didn't have to have shots. So we're thankful that that is happening and pray that that continues. 
And we pray for continued healing for Millie and her broken elbow, which has uh, been quite painful. So pray that, that God will continue to heal her as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. We come to you in worship. We come to you in confession. We come to you with thanksgiving and we come to you with questions and concerns and struggles. God, we worship you because you are the God of heaven and earth, the God who created the land and the seas. And no matter how far we run, you'll always find us. You'll always follow us and chase us and seek after us. God, we come to you in confession because even though we know that you are a good God, we so badly want to do things our own way that we, we find ourselves off the path so often. We find ourselves trying to do things our way and and realizing that we're making a mess of it. And God, we come back and we say we're sorry. We say, forgive us. We ask for your mercy and your grace. God, continue to, to bring us back onto the straight path. Help us to see the folly of our ways. God, we come to you in thanksgiving because of all the good gifts that you give us. God, sometimes it, it, it's hard to see things happen that we don't want to happen and, and we, we get lost in, in the, the grief and the mourning and we forget all of the good things that you've done. God, help us to remember that in the good and in the bad that we are in your hand that you continue to hold us in your hand, that you continue to guide us, that sometimes you have to carry us because we can't walk in our own strength. But you're always there. God, we lift up those to you who who are hurting and who need your healing. God, we pray for continued healing for Rhonda, that this new home will be a place of healing for her, that she can continue to heal physically and mentally. God, we're thankful for the good news from Bob that the medications seem to be working, and God, we pray that they continue to work, that you continue to bring healing in his body. And God, for Millie as well, as her elbow continues to heal, God, we pray that it will heal with strength, that it will heal properly. They'll give the doctors wisdom and how they proceed with that. And God, for others who who we don't know about right now or those who are in our families or in our community that need your healing touch, God, we pray for healing today. For those who struggle with depression and anxiety and loneliness, God, we pray that you would give them peace. And God, when we leave this place today, help us to go into this community to be your hands and your feet. God, help us to use the unique strengths and abilities and talents that you've given us to minister to the people that you've put around us. Lord, hear us now as we pray the way you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen invite you to stand. We're going to sing together, It Is Well With My Soul. If you want to follow along in your hymnal, it's hymn number 495. And we're going to sing all three verses.
be seated. So as we've already heard, we're, we're continuing our series in the book of Jonah. And I did this last week. I want to do it again. I want to, we're going to start off with a little true or false just to check our Jonah knowledge. This is such a well-known story, but there's a lot of misconceptions that we have in the story too. So we've got a little, a little true or false here. So if you think this is true, raise your hand. Jonah was swallowed by a whale. True or false? Technically, it's false. He was swallowed by a great fish. You could say, even I'm wrong, because I named this whole series in the belly of the whale. But that's our our misconception, right? And, And who knows? We don't know exactly what kind of fish it was. It's, here's, here's a, little, a little Hebrew humor for you. I'm sure you guys will all laugh at this. At least Bob will laugh at this at home when he watches it. In, in Hebrew, there's some words that when you, when you put them next to English, they sound funny. Like in Hebrew, who means he in English. He in Hebrew means she. And dog means fish. So there you go. So the word in Hebrew, it says there was a dog gadol. Gadol means great. So a great fish is what swallowed Jonah. There's your Hebrew lesson for the day. I promise I'll, I'll keep those to a minimum. Number two, raise your hand if you think this is true. Jonah ran away from God to Tarshish. Another kind of trick question. He ran away from God to Joppa to grab a ship headed towards Tarshish. All right, one more. True or false? As soon as Jonah told the sailors he was to blame, they threw him overboard. True or false? Oh, no one's buying that one. Why not? They didn't do it right away, did they? They tried desperately to get back to shore. All right, let's, let's read our scripture in, uh, in plain English today. Again, Jonah chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 7 through 17. The soldiers said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell On Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as you pleased. So they picked up Jonah, and they threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Now, we've heard this story so many times, right? We know this story inside and out. And there's so much interesting stuff in here when we really dig in. Here we find that, you know, last week we, we read the part where God calls Jonah, he tells him to go to Nineveh, and, and Jonah wants nothing to do with it, right? He decides that he's going to get on a boat headed to Tarshish. I want to put this map up again. I put this map up last week just as to show us how far he was willing to go. Right, so we've got Joppa on the map, which was relatively close to where Jonah was from. You see Nineveh in the upper right-hand side there. That's where God was calling him to go. And then Tarshish is way, way, way over on the left side of that map. That's, that's Spain. That's the Strait of Gibraltar that you see right there. That's 2,300 miles away that Jonah was going to run to get away from God. Do you see the irony there? Right? Part of it is that he was willing to go that far. 2,300 miles is a long way for us to travel in our current day. But back then on, on, on a ship would have taken weeks or months to go that far. The irony is that Jonah himself says, I serve the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. He knows that God made all of this, and there's no way for him to run. He can't run far enough to get away from God. The other piece of irony here is that Jonah is a prophet of God. Now, when we think of the prophets of God, we think of good people, right? These people who were doing good things, who were, who were God's mouthpiece. They were, they were speaking on behalf of God to God's people. When, when God's people were, were going down the wrong path, the prophets would hear a message from God and they would pass that message along trying to get God's people to come back to the right path. These were people who were not popular. They weren't always well-liked but they were doing good things. They were doing God's will. They were desperately trying to help God's people stay on the right path. So what should be happening in this story is that Jonah should be the good guy in the story. He's the one who's, got, who's carrying God's message. And these sailors, I mean, sailors don't have a good reputation, Right? When you think of, of sailors, especially as we go back, and we th even when you think of pirates and, and all that, they don't have a good reputation. They're not known as being upstanding citizens. But in this story, who's doing the right thing? Jonah's running from God. Jonah's trying to get as far away from God as he can, which is impossible. And these sailors, as soon as Jonah said... I serve the Lord, the God who created the land and the sea, and it's my fault that we're in this problem. They should have been like, walk the plank, dude. See ya. But they don't. They're like, wait, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way we can fix this. There's got to be a way we can get to safety, and we can drop you off on land, and then you can go do your thing. They're trying desperately to help Jonah. More irony. The tables get flipped again. How often do we see this in Scripture, that God flips the tables on us? He says, I know you think it's supposed to be this way, but look at this. So the sailors try desperately. In fact, again, I'm going I'm to go back to the Hebrew. There's an interesting word in Hebrew in this thing where it, it talks about the, the sailors throwing things into the sea. And there's this word in there that we, we studied this book, just for background, we studied this book in my last Hebrew class. We had to like dig into all these different words. And there's a word in there that says that they were throwing the things into the sea to lighten the ship from upon them. And we had to wrestle, what does that mean? 
What does that mean, that they were lightening the ship from upon them? They were desperately, they had this weight, this storm, and the ship had become a weight on them, and it was going to threaten to drown them. They were all going to drown if they didn't do something. And they desperately wanted to fix the problem, and they could have fixed the problem really easy by just throwing Jonah into the sea. He told them as much. But yet they, they threw all of their supplies and all of their cargo overboard to lighten the ship from upon them so that they could save themselves, but so they could also save Jonah. These were good men, desperately trying to help Jonah, even though Jonah was way off track. More irony. How many of us need to follow that example, that when there's somebody who's different from us, somebody who's not like us, somebody who we don't agree with, or we, somebody who serves a different God than we do, these guys were willing to throw their cargo overboard to save Jonah. If we find out that somebody doesn't eat the same brand of chips that we do, we're willing to cut them out, send them down the road. Don't we do that? But if somebody somebody doesn't think like us or act like us or believe exactly the same thing we do, you're done. You're out. I'm done with you. And here are these men who we know from the story that they did not serve the same God that Jonah did. It says they were all calling out each to their own God. They all served different gods. They were from different nations around the world. And yet they were willing to throw their cargo overboard to save Jonah's life. There's something there that we can learn. And I think the other thing for us to learn in this story is when Jonah told the sailors to throw him overboard, what must have been going through Jonah's mind? He wasn't expecting to spend the next three days in the belly of a fish and to get vomited onto dry land. That wasn't his plan, right? When he says, throw me into the sea, this is the end of the line for Jonah. When you're on the sea in a storm, it's not pretty. I don't know how many of you are boaters. Have any of you ever been in a storm on a boat? One of you? Okay. It's, I've never been either. I, I've been on Lake Michigan when the seas started to get like six feet waves, that's kind of scary in itself. I can't imagine being in in a real fierce storm. It had to be terrifying. It was terrifying enough for them to throw the cargo overboard. So when Jonah says, throw me into the sea... And they knew this too because of their prayer where they prayed that God would have mercy on them. So don't don't hold this man's death against us. When he goes into the sea, that's the end. He's going to die. He's going to drown and he's going to die. And the sailors say, don't hold that against us. We have tried everything we know how to do. This is our last resort. Jonah is on the run from God. He wants to go all the way to Tarshish. And now, he's going to be thrown into the sea to his death. He's going to be thrown into the sea to his death because he's running from God. And the grace in the story is this, that even in death... He can't get away from God. Jonah is essentially committing suicide here. He's saying, guys, 
this is it. Throw me into the sea. Kill me. I'm done. And even in that, he can't get away from God. I don't understand how this works. I'm not going to get into the science of it. I don't know how a person can imagine to survive in the belly of a fish. I don't know where the oxygen comes from. I don't have those kind of answers. But even in the middle of the sea, in the middle of a crazy storm, drowning, you can't get away from God. God is there. And God sends this great fish to swallow Jonah, and it says he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And next week, we're going we're gonna to start to hear what happens, what Jonah has to say while he's in the belly of the fish. And this is, this is what we all remember, right? I mean, this is what I, this is what I titled our, our series, is In the Belly of the Whale. Whenever anybody says Jonah... You remember the guy who got thrown into the sea and spent three days and three nights in the belly of a fish. And what I want us to get out of these, out of these next few weeks is that Jonah being in the belly of a fish is such a minor, insignificant part of this story. This story is not about a fish. This story is about God's mercy and grace. And our inability to comprehend God's mercy and grace. Jonah's inability to comprehend God's mercy and grace. God speaks to Jonah and says, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to speak to Nineveh. I want you to give them this word from me. Why? Because if they repent, I'll forgive them. And Jonah knows that, and so he doesn't want to go. He hates the people of Nineveh so much that he doesn't want them to be recipients of God's grace. How crazy is that? But do we not do the same thing? We try to decide who's in and who's out. These people are in, these people are out. These people are deserving of God's grace. Those people are not deserving of God's grace. We think we've got the answers. We don't have a clue. And just like God wanted to show his mercy and grace to the people in Nineveh, he shows his mercy and his grace to Jonah, even when Jonah is on the run. Jonah wants to get as far away from God as possible. God pursues him, sends a storm after the boat. The sailors throw Jonah into the sea to save themselves and the boat as a last resort. And God still chases after Jonah. He still chases after us. His mercy and his grace continues, and it continues, and it continues. That's what we need to learn from this story. We're going to see it every week in all the different ways that this story plays out, that God's mercy and grace continues, and it chases us, and it comes after us, and even when we don't know what to do with it, it's still there. And he calls us to be people of grace and people of mercy. He calls us to love the way he loved us, to forgive because we've been forgiven, to show grace because we've been shown grace, to show mercy because we have been shown mercy. He calls us to live a different way, a different way than the world. Do we have the courage and the faith to live that way? That's the question for us today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much that we have your word, that we can dig in in this way to learn more about who you are and who you've called us to be. God, as we, as we study the story of Jonah, help us, help us to see past the fish. Help us to see the bigger picture in this story, that, that you are a merciful and gracious God, and you 
want that mercy and grace to spread like wildfire, and you've called us to be a part of that process. God, give us the faith and the courage. Help us to be courageous in living the way you've called us to live. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all God's people said, amen. We are going to sing together. We're going to sing Wonderful Grace of Jesus. If you want to follow along in your hymnal, it's hymn number 114. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. seated. I'll invite the ushers to come forward. We're going to have a great opportunity and blessing to celebrate this communion meal together today. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples to celebrate the Passover meal together. And when he took the bread He broke it, and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you take and eat of this bread, remember me.
body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And likewise, after they had eaten, he took the cup and he poured it out and he said to them, This is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Take and drink. God, what an awesome gift it is that we remember your sacrifice. That we remember this new covenant. Whenever we break bread and drink this cup together, that your body was broken your blood was spilled to pay the debt that we could not pay, to bring to us the forgiveness of sins. God, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. We have just a couple of uh, quick announcements before we go. Um, for Operation Christmas Child for the month of June, we are collecting toys for girls and small stuffed animals. We have uh, coming up in July our summer music camp. So if you know any middle or high school students that are interested in music and want to come and learn some stuff, we're going to spend a week learning some music together and we're going to put a concert on Friday night. So there's uh, more information and a sign-up sheet on our website. And Margaret has an announcement. You're on. <laughs> not not quite grandpa yet, but almost. <laughs>
it, because we want to get uh, Pastor Randy over there, let him get his with him by the church, and then uh, we'll be all set to celebrate. After everybody's been served in and taken ice cream, and then we'll bring um, Pastor Grandpa Randy up to the front, <laughs> and then we can do the gifts and blessings. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Margaret. As you leave this place today, go in the knowledge that God's grace chases you down. That you can't run far enough to get away from God's grace and mercy. Amen. Go in peace.